What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. Come on. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I am back to inspire you to not only be great in this game, but also in life. I don't care where you at. I don't care what's going on in your life. You gotta continue to persevere. Just remember, I believe in you, so keep going. So, if you're looking for a one-stop solution to get better at Fortnite, you gotta check out ProGuides.com. We've got video courses that go from the basics all the way to the more advanced stuff. And with live one-on-one -on -one coaching, our experienced pros can guide you on your path to betterment. Drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Then head on over to ProGuides.com to get started. All right, starting things off with the early game. You know, it looks as if, you know, Bisek's trying to play it slow and steady, right? Choosing the sign station, landmark for his drop. As he glides in, he notices a player at a slightly higher altitude contesting him. Now, what would you do here? Land at the green weapon on the rooftop or go for one of the doors and try to loot inside? Hmm. All right, guys, so the correct choice would be go for the loot. Anytime you have a better drop than the player contesting you, land at a weapon if you can see one, alright? Bicic does so right here and enables him to rush his opponent and pick up a free kill. And this is why, my friends, it is so vital to practice your landing. So, you know, you can just make them as fast as possible because having a quick drop can make or break your early game, especially when you have players contesting you. You know, as you just saw, a poor landing just got this player killed. So Bison makes his way west to the crash side island and notices a little bit of smoke in the distance. Somebody just destroyed a tree and gave themselves away. Uh-oh. So now Bison's on alert. He reaches the shore and immediately starts crouching to reduce his footstep noise. Crouching is something, guys, that, you know, a lot of us need to just start doing a lot more when we're creeping up on players. It really does make a significant difference in keeping your location hidden and can often be what gets you the limb. But in this case, Bicey clears the entire island and doesn't spot anybody. So they must have rotated. So once he feels it's safe, all right, he goes back to harvesting mats. Materials are super important, man. And once you have a decent loadout, gathering them should be one of your primary focuses. So, since Bisek still has time before the storm closes in, you know, he heads north to continue his loot path. Once he reaches the island, he checks behind him and he notices an enemy. How would you respond to see this player? Would you swim across and push them? Or would you ignore them and continue, you know, to do what you're doing? Hmm. Well, Bisek chooses to ignore him and he carries on. You know, if he were to swim across, the enemy would, you know, likely spot him uh, or hear him coming. And, and you know, it's not like it's really a fight where Bisek has the starting advantage, so he smartly decides not to take it. Okay, so if you're wondering what scenarios give the advantage, take a look right here. And I mean like right here. I don't know if you noticed, but Bisek spotted a player at this little dock up ahead. And based on the safe zone location, the player has to rotate toward him eventually. Plus, you know, they're likely to take the boat next to them, which should make it easier to beat him down. So Bisek just lurks in the shadows and he just waits for the opening. So just as he expected, the player heads toward him, and oh my goodness, <laughs> that was a lot of whips right there. Pretty ugly, not gonna lie about that, but you know, it's all good. Since he's positioned on high ground, he ramps up a bit, and he lands a clean laser to pick up the kill. I guess that was a bloom for you. Sometimes, sometimes, man, you know, it just works, and other times, it does have you just like throwing your controller at the TV. Who's been there? I know I have. Okay, so now that Bisek's work at the islands is done, he heads back to the mainland. So his inventory is beyond stacked at this point, guys. I mean, yo, just look at this. He is, however, missing a few rockets and, you know, some shields he could potentially stack up. So what do you guys think he should do here? Should he head into Sweaty Sands and try to find some leftover loot? Or should he trek deeper into the circle and establish a spot near the center of the zone? Hmm. So the correct answer is to try and position in the center. You know, while Bisek could carry a bit more shields, chances are that he's not going to find it in Sweaty after the early game already passed. Instead, he should get to the center zone so he has an easier time rotating onto the next zone. So he has an easier time rotating onto the next one. You know, as Bisek passes through, however, he has an unexpected run-in with an enemy. He quickly responds with some defensive builds and boxes up. So, now with an enemy above you right here, like, how would you play this? Would you edit out and try to crank up to high ground, or would you, like, stay inside the box and just wait to see how the enemy responds? Well, I can tell you right now how Bisek plays this one. He waits inside his box, and soon after, the enemy disengages. Okay, so uh, why did he do that? First of all, all right, this was just an unintended run-in, all right? As in, it didn't seem like either player was really trying to be aggressive at the time. They sort of just ran into each other by accident. So I guess it makes sense to play it slow and just not throw the game, you know, with an overly aggressive response. 
You know, had he edited it out and built up to like force a fight, things might have ended disastrously. In the mid game, guys, which is generally a time where you don't want to force engagements, you know, there are going to be players nearby that would be more than happy to third party. And he's made it this far already, all right? There's just really no viable reason to be like hyper aggressive here when he can just instead play it slow and just wait for in game placement points, you know? And play it slow, he does. He pretty much AFKs for a couple of minutes, waiting for the end game to come, turtling up here. Okay, so I do want to point out that he notices some big rocks beside him, right? So he expands his base a bit and recovers the brick. Always do that if you have the option, as a bigger base tends to be a lot safer than a single one by one. When the next zone is revealed, well, look at that. He's right inside of it. That's part of the reason you want to position in the center of the second and third zones. It makes getting circle favored uh, a whole lot easier. Okay, so with more and more enemies entering the circle, Bizek hops into his brick pyramid so that he could just scout out the area around him more easily. It's a great tactic. We still don't really see a lot of players use. Not only does it give you more visibility than if you were in a box, but you know, most players don't expect someone to be inside of a cone, so it can even lead to sneaky edit plays if someone gets too close. And speaking of someone too close, a guy boxes up right next to our man. With no clear opening to start shooting, Bizek doesn't bother going for shots. It'll only give away his position and potentially a kill opportunity later on, right? This guy must have ticked off the entire lobby earlier or something because out of nowhere, a bunch of grenades come flying in. Lucky they missed Bizek, but this other guy, uh-oh, yeah, yeah, it, it was a little rough for him. The whole lobby just tears him a new one right here. Bizek makes the right choice of joining in, deals a ton of damage, but sadly misses out on the Olymp. Okay, so if you were in this situation, like what would you do? Would you go for the loot in front of you or would you stay safe inside your box? All right, well, you know, since you're the closest one to the loot, you should go for it, right? Bizek does, and with proper play, he protects against the spam. He makes sure to tunnel over and uses the brick and metal, not wood. The player that just died before is, you know, tried to turtle with wood and never expanded their base when getting spammed. You know, if they built more than a single box at the start, they probably wouldn't have, you know, have gotten grenaded like that. So Bizek uses the spare material to beef up his base, and then he goes back to scouting and looking for more kill opportunities. Very smart. The next zone arrives and Bizek must be blessed or something like that, man, because he's inside again. With the spare metal still available, he builds up a few stories to gain a better position. So considering how valuable materials will be in the upcoming moments, you know, I doubt Bizek would have just built this high without, you know, metal or to replenish it, right? But since he has it, yo, he might as well construct a classic one by one to get better angles in his surroundings. And yes, sir, his job around this point is to look toward the outskirts. These are where the limb points are going to be, all right, on players scrambling in. He makes safe edits, sees what he can go for, and he just tries to disrupt players with his rifle as much as he can. It even ends up getting him an elimination, although this dude is way too far for him to loot. Bizek's luck finally runs out with this upcoming circle. Uh-oh. He actually has to rotate for once in his life. How would you guys play this one? Like, would you look for picks before, you know, heading to the circle or would you try to get there ASAP? Early rotations are instrumental in the end game, guys. You know, the, the longer you wait, the worse it typically is. So book it to the safe zone as soon as you have the opportunity. Bizek knows this and he makes his way over there. You'll notice how he decides to build a base next to someone else's. Pro players tend to do this a lot since it helps out when not just getting focused on. As long as a player you're next to isn't a maniac, it's typically safer than trying to box up out in the open. I don't want to bore you with too much, man, so let's just skip ahead to the next safe zone. Now, okay, how do you think Bikes is going to play this one? You seem like a smart fellow, okay? I bet you know the answer. Yes, you. Yeah, I'm only talking to you. You seem smart. All right, say it with me. He's gonna rotate immediately, all right? Quick rotations are just so necessary to establish a better position. Not only like to help you find kills on slower, indecisive players, but to stay alive as well. Look like Bizek's moving up some layers here, maybe to see if he can take control of high ground. But there's someone already there with an RPG. After getting knocked down, it's not worth investing the materials to take height this early, okay? So Bizek just chills, and once the storm starts moving, so does he. You know, you can tell Bizek's doing a fantastic job conserving his materials. You know, most of his tunnels are efficient, usually just a floor and a ramp behind him, only the bare minimum to avoid getting hit. Things do get a little hairy when he gets blocked off by an opponent's builds, but he could just pull off a slick ramp reversal into a meaty pump shot to get the kill. I guess you could call getting blocked off here a happy accident because this guy just delivered Bizek all the materials he needs. 
When he gets out of here, Bizek's water falls down to play the low ground. He was quite high up against a player with an RPG, so I guess it was a great call. High ground players tend to focus those directly underneath them, so, you know, dropping the low ground helps create a bit of distance and allows Bizek to just chill out for a bit. All right, guys, so there are nine players left, and the seventh safe zone has arrived. For your final what would you do scenario, I'm gonna ask you this, all right? Do you rotate in while going up some layers to eventually take height? or do you stay on the low ground all the way into the end of the match? All right, well, since it's the seventh circle, it's prime time for taking height. You know, in solo matches, trying to control it before this kind is risky, as you usually run out of materials too quickly. So around the seven to last circle, it's often the best time. And that's what Bicek is going to do. Try to work his way up and then target the current high ground holder with his RPG. I don't know what the heck happened here. Maybe his controller died or something like that. But either way, he plummets to the ground, which sucks, but at least he's still kicking, right? So he makes the best of it and he just gets in safe. Okay, so at this point, Bizek's so low on materials, man, but there are still eight players up. So he needs to start looking for a kill. Through all the craziness, he hears some footsteps and manages to find not one, but two players with a single rocket. That would definitely replenish his match. Oh my goodness. But he decides not to go for it. This storm was pretty much already covering all the loot with no floppers in his inventory. So, I mean, I guess I can see why he opted to rotate instead. But now he's got pretty much nothing left. So it's time to bust out the RPG. All right, so we've said it before and we're going to say it again. The rocket launcher is so absolutely powerful in these in-game circles, man. You already saw it pick up two kills, but as long as he can continue to hold height, he can slay out the rest of the lobby. Finally, it's a one versus one situation. Uh-oh. Bizek's going to hold his high ground as much as he can, but in the end, with no mats, he's got to do something. So he pulls off this brilliant play where he tanks the storm so that he can position the drop on his opponent. Oh my goodness, man. It works like a charm and he earns himself the W. Bizek went on to win another match that night, ultimately won the Catch Cup with an astonishing 97 points. Absolute beast, man. He's an absolutely incredible player. So if you want to check him out, we're going to leave the links to his channel in the description. All right, guys, let's do a quick recap of what we just learned. All right. It was a lot. So let's do it. What helped enable Bizek to win his drop spot was having a better landing than his opponent. You know, if you can learn the best way to drop at your landing spot, you're going to be the one controlling the area. During the rest of the early game, Bizek was really patient and he only took fights when they were in his favor. Things like having high ground or being able to get the drop on somebody are just some of the ways to shift the favor to your side. All right, so for the mid game, Bizek tried to position near the center of circles two and three so he'd be more likely to be in the next zones, which did absolute wonders for him. You know, when Bizek ran into somebody during the mid game, he didn't react erratically. He remained calm and it turned out that his opponent didn't want to fight anyway. And playing the mid game passively is a major part of reaching those placement points. Okay, so when building bases, Bizek uses brick or metal. We saw how well, you know, wood worked for that one unlucky dude, remember that guy? So using harder mats and expanding your base a bit is just a must, unless you want to get focused down. When the end game came, our man Bizek was quick to rotate. It kept him away from harm while also giving him time to look for a limbs. Quick rotations, my friends, are critical for surviving the end game. When Bizek reached the seventh circle, he started looking to take high ground. While it didn't work out for him, you know, that's the usual timing for taking height in solo matches when things are less hectic. Let's go. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my new Insta at Your Motivation Guy. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the analysis, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also use code Pro Guides in the item shop to support the team that brings you these videos. And you know you've been keeping track of how many options you got, right? So let us know in the comments. We'll see you later.